Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. Today's December 31st, the last trade day of 2015. And much like all of 2015, we ended on a down note. Let's take a look at the Grain Edge trading platform and see where we closed. In Chicago, corn and wheat were fractionally lower, giving up a quarter of a cent, while beans gave up six cents after having a 10 cent advance for the last two trade sessions. News today was mostly light, limited to really USDA's export sales report in that report, USDA showed corn and wheat sales were in line with analyst expectations, but beans was very light compared to analyst expectations. We only sold 578,000 metric tons for the entire uh, old crop, new crop marketing years versus analyst expectations of 1.0 to 1.4 million metric tons. So those numbers were certainly setting the stage uh, for the sell-off here at the end of the year. On the positive side, there was an announcement by USDA that China did buy 119,000 metric tons of old crop soybeans, but overall the bean market continues to be in a defensive stance. We not only have the negative situation on exports, but we also have the looming crop uh, abundance that's going to be coming out of South America. Right now the only sort of target area that we're worried about is northern Brazil and all the weather forecasters seem to be suggesting that the next two weeks are going to be favorable for moisture in that parched dry north northeast section of Brazil. So that concerns me when we come back from the uh, New Year's Eve and we, when we come back into the new year, will we see a new round of selling in light of these improved weather conditions in the dry part of Brazil? Uh, let's take a look also at the weekly, uh, I'm sorry, the, the year to date export sales that we've been doing. And this is more bearish news that keeps overhanging this market. What we have on this chart is basically how much uh, corn, soybeans, and wheat we've sold relative to this time last year and in conjunction what USDA thinks we're going to sell relative to last year in their supply and demand report. Now keep in mind that supply and demand report will get re get revised in uh, about January 11th so potentially those numbers can change but overall across the board we have a pace of sales this year that is substantially less than what USDA has factored in. In the case of corn our sales year to date are 25% than they were this time last year. USDA only factoring in a 6% drop. Even in soybeans where we've had pretty good export sales, we're off 11% from last year versus USDA only factoring in a 7%. And then in the case of wheat, 13% lower versus 8% by USDA. So that leads me to be very uh, cautious about the potential for any sort of price rally here in the coming year. We just have this overhanging lack of demand in the export market. And even when we go out to new crop delivery, this is 2016, you can see that really only corn is sort of on par with where we would expect to be based on last year's number. Soybeans, this time last year, we had 1.9 million metric tons booked for new crop delivery. This year we only have 1.3 million metric tons. So again, the demand numbers on the export side are just very, very disappointing. And when you combine that with the potential for a large South American crop, you have Argentina really entering the export market in full force thanks to them eliminating export taxes, quotas, and they are really going to be driving uh, a competitive environment in the coming year. Which leads us to what do we look for in 2016? Unfortunately, I see very little change from the mood that we've had in 2015. And in fact, I suspect that in quarter one and quarter two, we're gonna see some more movement to the downside. We have oversupply, we have very good prospects out of South America, we have trouble with our demand side, uh, indicators including exports, the end users in terms of soy crushers and in terms of ethanol are facing very very weak margins so there's just very little to hang your hat on if you're looking for any sort of bullish rally in the next 
quarter or, or even out into the early parts of summer. Price targets, if I have to put a price target to it, I wouldn't be surprised to see us fall below $8 beans on Chicago and for the potential to go as low as $3.30 on corn. We just have all these negative fundamentals lining up against the, against the grain markets and I think that's going to really drag heavily as we go into the new year. And my question to you if you're a producer, are you ready for that next leg down in prices? We've been fairly stable going back to harvest. Basis has been flat. Futures has been sort of choppy in a very narrowly defined range. But are you ready if you're a producer if we drop another 30 to 50 cents down? Can you weather that storm? And if not, maybe you need to get some protection in the grain hedge. We can certainly help you with that. Talking about puts and hedges to help you protect if we do have some downside here. Looking ahead into the summer, obviously it's going to be driven a lot by what goes on in weather. And we've been talking the last few days about what the impact may be of El Nino's fade as we go into next summer. If it is a, a, a quick fade and if we get the moisture to stop in the spring and potentially we can enter into a very dry phase in the early part of the summer. So that potentially could have some stimulus and get some get the markets excited in say a July 4th type of rally. But again, it's really going to depend on El Nino. The weather uh, forecasters are watching that closely and we will be pre pre preparing or, or presenting some of those results as we see them. But don't hold your hat on a summer rally if you're worried about old crop supplies right now. If you have old crop corn, old crop beans that you need to market between now and the next six months, I think it's probably time to start doing it. That's all we got. Have a great uh, new year and we'll see you in 2016.